or the heartbeat of Seattle. Hello, and thank you for stopping by. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. If you are not a subscriber, I hope that something within this video gives you a reason to want to hit the subscribe button, which is below the video. Hi, and thank you for stopping by. Uh, normally, I, uh, I'm doing videos lately with just my photograph across, but I wanted to do this video uh, because I thought emotional response was warranted. Um, in Seattle, Police Chief Carmen Best has resigned. I guess uh, she's been the chief of police for the last two years. And the city of Seattle has had its problems, a lot of problems. Recently, the city has agreed to defund the police department. Now, you've got an awful lot of people that were rallying to not have that happen, to have it stopped. And in doing so, those people have come out in numbers to voice their opinion. That's only a drop in the bucket compared to all of Seattle. There's a large group of people that believe that the chief of, that uh, the police department needs to be slimmed down or done away with. That's easy to do. Just get rid of the police department. Yes, that's easy. Okay, well, when you do that, you're not really thinking about what and how you're putting Seattle into jeopardy. And when I say that, it, I'm saying that um, that you are putting lives in danger. You're allowing a criminal element that gravitates to right underneath the surface. It'll pop its head up occasionally where it can be seen, but for the most part, it stays right there underneath the surface layer of Seattle. Now, when you've got no chief of police, you've got no police department, the city council decides to defund the police department, you have that element coming up to the top, and then they become the people that dictate how the city of Seattle gets ran. Just like in the 20s and 30s and 40s Chicago, Al Capone ran everything with an iron fist. We don't want that happening again. Yes, Al Capone did some nice things for the city. F soup kitchens. He hired people to sweep the streets to keep them clean on the blocks that he gravitated around. He did a lot of things, but he damaged a lot more than he did good. And with defunding the police department, we are doing the same thing. We are allowing the modern day Al Capones to come out from the woodwork and out of the darkness. And we are um, putting Seattle in a lot more major jeopardy than it has been. People that want to get high, people that want to live outside and in tents, because let's face it, Seattle's not offering anybody public housing. Not really. Not, not like it used to be. Back in the 90s, you had apartment buildings that worked with the city and the state, and they had what was called in-house Section 8. If you qualified, you got an apartment for a third of your income, but it was only good for that apartment. You could not take it with you. It wasn't like Section 8, where you get the voucher, you can go anywhere in the United States and get an apartment. With that, you had to be within the city limits of Seattle, and it had to be for that apartment building. Once you left, or once you uh, moved or was evicted, uh, heaven forbid you were, once you were evicted, that would open up for somebody else that needed Section 8 for that apartment building. And the reason I know this is because I worked at the Downtown Emergency Service Center, which was down by Pioneer Square. So, 
having said that, you don't have those today because let's face it, uh, property owners would much rather have the young professional that looks good and makes good money living in their apartment buildings because they know they're going to take good care of them. They don't have to worry about calling the police. Oh, I'm not saying everybody that's poor. I'm not saying everybody that's low income is a bad uh, tenant. No, there's a lot of good tenants that are poor. I know some people that are low income and uh, they are very decent and very neat and clean and they respect their area. They just can't afford to pay a lot of rent. But property owners and landlords are going for a sure thing, not a gamble. It costs money to gamble, and a gamble doesn't always pay off. Now, instead of assuming the risk like we used to, we decided not to do that. Now, um, the police is being defunded. They have voted to do that. Now, Carmen Best was the chief of police, and she is uh, resigning as we speak, or she has resigned. Now, I wrote her a Twitter, and I asked her to not resign. I thought, okay, look, you have just a little bit of money now. You've got the police force. Now, instead of the police... And Carmen Best saying, okay, this is what we have to work with, fellas. This is what we have to work with, which is more important, us getting paid or Seattle being safe. Well, they decided that it was getting paid. They decided that it was getting paid. They thought that was more important than protecting the city. Now, if I'm wrong, I want you to tell me if that's not how you see it. Put your comment in the comments below. Now, the new interim chief of police is Adrian Diaz. He's going to be here until either they make him permanent or they find somebody else to take his place. Now, I've said this before, that you cannot be afraid to speak up. You cannot be afraid to speak freely if you are a police officer, but a lot of them are because they're afraid that a group of officers in their department or in their precinct are going to gang up on them and give them the business if they decide to rat on one of their fellow police officers. But if the police officer is not cut out to be in that department or if, it's, if the police officer is not cut out to be a police officer, then that officer needs to go and get another job. It's not fair to the department the precinct, the police, or it's not fair to the citizens of the city. It's not fair to him or her either for them to be there and possibly get themselves killed because they decided to act like John Wayne or Joanne Wayne. Now, if you are a police officer and you have had loads and loads of problems, then it's more than likely a, a thought just coming out of my head, but it's more than likely that you are not cut out to be where you're at. That is not the job for you. If you put on a pair of shoes that cause your feet to hurt, chances are they're not the right size, and you need to find another pair of shoes that will fit you better. So I uh, don't know too much about the new interim uh, police chief, but uh, Carmen Best has been on the force for 20, I believe 28 years. I believe that's what was said. 28 years. And uh, so now she has become uh, a police, uh, chief of police that she has retired from because she cannot take the city council defunding the police department. What I would have done, this is just me personally, Unless those cuts to the police department included getting rid of the chief of police, I would have said to the city council and the mayor, okay, this is what you're doing. We will do the best we can within those perimeters. We don't need more money. We don't need more cops. We need the cops that we have to work more smart to work better. 
Yes, it'll be hard. It will. And there'll be a lot of people trying to take advantage of you. And there'll be a lot of people in neighborhoods that probably don't want you there. But you're there for their safety. You're there to serve them. And I get it. It's not easy when you got riots and you got people coming from out of the woodwork from other places that are helping the riot get worse than it is, causing that riot. Now, you've got people that see you as the problem. Those people are always going to be there. No matter how good you are, they're going to be there. But the good ones in the neighborhood, the good citizens in the neighborhood will respect you and will back you if they are not afraid to do so. But if you come off like John or Joanne Wayne, every time you step out of a squad, then they have no reason to trust you. They think you're going to be the same old, same old. Now, how do we move forward? That's the major question. How does Seattle move forward? And we, with a capital W and a capital E, we are the heartbeat of Seattle. So what are we going to do about this, Seattle? How are we going to get together and move forward without giving up our individuality, that is? I am a constitutionalist. I am neither a Democrat nor a Republican. I am not an independent, for that matter. George Washington believed that a two-party system would destroy America, and that's what has happened. We are majorly divided, and the government likes us to be divided because it keeps us from banding together, and it keeps us from pulling in the same direction with an idea. Everybody wants to be, how, how was that, how did that go, oh, nobody wants to play rhythm guitar, everybody wants to be the leader in the band, yes, that's an old gospel song from the Oak Ridge Boys, entitled, nobody wants to play lead, nobody wants to play rhythm guitar behind Jesus, everybody wants to be the lead singer in the band. And that's the same way with the way we live our lives. Nobody wants to be rhythm guitar. Nobody wants to help push up the rear. It takes all your arms. If you've got your arms, if you've got both your arms, your chest, your head, your eyes, if everything on your body works, and you decide to go for a walk, it takes every part of your body to get yourself to where you're going. Your legs can move and you can keep your hands steady at the side of your body, but eventually your arms are going to start swaying because it's helping your legs move forward. So everybody has to band, to, everything has to work together. It takes everybody. Every single citizen in Seattle, it takes to make things work right. And hopefully, I was hoping Carmen Best wouldn't have resigned. If I was the mayor of Seattle, which I want to run for mayor in 2025, but if I was the mayor of Seattle, there is absolutely no way I would have accepted her uh, a resignation. I would not have. She could have said, this is what's going on. I don't feel comfortable staying on. I would have took her aside and I would have said, yes, we are defunding the police department. But if you show us that you can make a go of it, we will refund you as time goes by. We will, yeah, just do the best you can with what you have to work with and don't keep asking for the moon. And that came from a movie that I saw called Tora, 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 where Admiral Halsey came in and they said that they needed 150 B-52 planes to circle Hawaii to keep a watch. Well, that sounded great on paper, but this isn't the paper fleet, they said. They said Admiral Halsey does the best he can with what he has to work with, and he doesn't ask for the moon. If you have only this much to work with, work with that. Make it work. It may not be easy, 
but it also isn't impossible if you set your mind to it. Anyway, this video went over way over what I was expecting. I normally try to keep my videos down to six, seven minutes because let's face it, 14 minutes, almost 15 minutes is a very long video. Uh, if you have anything to add to this or you know anything I don't, please put your comments below. If you have an idea for a video, please put it in the comments as well. Uh, for all of my subscribers, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it. I try to do what I can, but this is all I do. I talk about things I find important. They may not be important to you, and I'm not here to make a quick buck. I'm not here to get millions of subscribers. That would be nice, but that's not, I'm not, I didn't get on YouTube to get rich. This isn't my job. This is my passion. I believe in Seattle, and I believe that Seattle can be better than it is. I want to fix Seattle, and I need your help to do it. So, again, if you like my videos, please give me a big old thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, hit that subscribe button. Um, thank you again for stopping by, and remember... Let's make tomorrow better than yesterday by doing the very best we can today. Have a good morning, Seattle, and all points beyond.